Hey everybody, this is Ezra from NextGen Studio X, and today I'm, I'm bringing you a uh, Cinema 4D tutorial. This is uh, going to be the first Cinema 4D tutorial I've done. And uh, yeah. Alright, so um, this is going to be a simple tutorial on this. Right here. Alright, so we've got cubes falling down and then a ball. Whoops lag and then we've got a ball coming down smashing them and breaking them apart easy all right so to do this in cinema 4d we are going to make a new project document scene whatever you want to call it and first thing we're going to do is hit this right here or you can go into, um, oh god, I can't even remember what you're going to. Um, edit project. Is that it? I don't even know. Oh, sorry, you go render and then um, render settings or control B. Oops, that was a bit <laughs> newbish right there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into output we're going to make our preset film slash video and then we're going to make it HDV slash HDTV 720-25 which is 720p um, 25 frames per second so that will make width 1280 height 720 and that is all we need to do for now with that so first thing we're going to do is we're going to just click this right here, or you could go hold it down and then select cube. Uh, we're going to drag it, actually I'm just going to keep it there for now. Uh, we're going to select the resizing tool, or the scale tool, and we're just going to scale it down quite a bit. We don't want it too big. So here I've got it, we'll just make it 90 centimeters by 90 centimeters by 90 centimeters and then we're going to hit MoGraph cloner cloner object and we're just going to drag that cube into the cloner object like so and so to get this sort of thing alright so what you want to do now is you're going to select from this drop down menu instead of linear you're going to make it grid array so that sort of happens. Now where it says count here, we're going to change that to 6 on each. And then we're going to make the size, which is pretty much like the spacing. We're going to make it um, 300, I mean 470 on each. So 470, 470. Now, because they're cubes, it makes it easy because everything's just going to be nicely uh, in squares and stuff. So it's going to be easy to do all the numbers and stuff. So now that's done. We can go to um, this sort of light with arrows coming out of it. And we're just going to hit floor, like so. Now with the floor, in case you haven't used Cinema 4D before, the floor doesn't just take up this area that it covers, it actually, it's infinite, infinite in every direction, so, yep, yeah, it's not, it's not like a, uh, for example, if we add a plane, then that will just be the size of the plane, so if we render that, see, it's the plane's there, but um, if we add a floor, so, and we hit render. See, it's it's not there because it's it's the floor. It's not it's not a plane. So, by the way, in case you've again never used Cinema 4D before, to render you just hit this button right here, or you press Control R. Like so. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to add that spear that comes that comes down, and we're just going to size it up a little bit like that. Okay, that's good enough. 
and we're going to drag it up. up. Okay. So now we've got our basic scene set up with the sphere, the cubes, and the floor. Now we can get into, I suppose, the fun stuff. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to select the cloner and you're going to hit C on the keyboard to make it an, an editable object. And all these cubes here get singled out. See, so they're all they all become individual objects. Okay, so once that's done, you want to minimize that. We're going to go to we're going to select the floor. We're going to right click go to dynamics tags and hit dynamics body if you're in cinema 4d uh, release 11 you're going to have to go to MoGraph tags and then uh, there'll be a option there called uh, rigid body but if you've got the latest version r12 you won't have to do that you just go into dynamics tags and then select dynamics body so if we hit play right here nothing happens all right so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to right click all right so let me just show you what happens um, if you do this so we've got our cloner object here with all our cubes with it you would think that if you right click and hit dynamics tags and dynamics body that all the cubes would do what they do in the animation so let's play it but as you can see they just fall through the floor not good okay so we're just going to delete that tag right there and we're going to select the first cube scroll down select the last cube right click dynamics tags dynamics body now if we hit play see see what happens they they start doing that so we go back and look at the animation again. Let's have a look. So it drops, they crush, and the ball comes down. Okay. So we're halfway there, or further ahead. So in the animation, you'll notice that the cube sort of crushes a bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move this up and then I'm going to hit play again. That's better. It, it uh, sort of crumbles a bit more. That's a lot better. And this, for me, this animation isn't long enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to select right here, which is frames, and we're going to make it, um, let's see, let's make it 300 frames. At 25 frames per second. Uh, that's going to be that's going to be a few seconds. Okay. So that's going to 300 frames is going to be maybe 12, um, you know, 10 seconds, something like that. I think it's 12 seconds. I'm not sure. Okay, so now we can start adding colors and stuff. But before we do that, we're just going to hold control, click on this tag, and we're just going to drag it onto the sphere. And that's going to give the sphere that, that dynamics tag. So it falls as well if we have a look, if we play. See? The sphere is falling as well, and then crush. Down the sphere goes. Okay. All good. Oops. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add our materials or colors. So we're going to double click down here in the materials panel right here three times. All right, so we're going to click on the first one, double click on the first one. Go to color and we'll make it, you know what, let's vary it from the animation. Let's make it nice green and then I'm going to 
untick specular down the bottom. We're going to un uncheck that. Then we're going to go onto reflection, check reflection, um, make the brightness um, about 35%, and make the color a you know a similar green, I suppose. Um, we can turn the brightness up on that now, actually. So we'll make it about 50% brightness. And then in texture, we're going to go, I'm going to select that texture, and we're going to choose Fresnel. That's F-R-E-S-N-E-L. And on that, we're going to turn the, bri uh, turn the mix strength to 25%. And that's it for now. So we can exit that, go into this one, make the color a very dark gray, not a black, just a very dark gray. And we're going to hit reflection, and we're going to make the reflection about 35. We will add a Fresnel as well, and make that about 30 and make the color of the reflection sort of a lighter a lighter gray and we'll turn the brightness down on that for an L as well like that okay. and the final one we are going to make it once again not what was in the video in the animation I mean, so we'll make it red. A dark, nice dark red. Reflection, tick reflection, color, dark red. Brightness, 50%. Texture, Fresnel. Mix strength, 25%. And that is it. Okay, now we can put our textures on or materials on I mean so the grain is going onto the cubes right there so you don't have to drag it onto each individual onto each individual cube you can just drag it onto the cloner the uh, the group called cloner and that'll make all the cubes green next we're going to drag black onto the floor so the so the floor is black. So the floor is black, and then we're going to drag red onto the sphere. So the sphere is red. Now, if we play, there we go. Okay. So if you want to see what it's going to look like in the video, just play it pause it and render it and that's what it's going to look like on that frame on the video play it pause it render it that's what it's going to look like play it pause it render it that's what it's going to look like so that's about it you guys I mean fairly simple when you are ready to render which means put it into the video make it a video um, file actually, yeah that, that actually looks a bit better I moved the sphere a bit higher up it brings down more of a crash so when you're ready to render it choose the angle that you want the video to be coming from I'm going to choose there. That looks good. Okay. And then we're going to go back into render settings. Our preset is already HD, but at uh, frame range, we want to change it from current frame to all frames. And then here, going to select format is QuickTime Movie. 
um, click on the three dots here where it says file I'm going to save it as um, um, MoGraph tutorial click save um, I can go into more depth in what you can do in render settings later but uh, that is just the basic stuff so we're going to exit that now and then when you're ready to make your animation and make it a video file hit the uh, the movie thing and in the orange box here so you've got the one on the left the one on the right is render settings the one in the middle is render in like a new window so you're just going to hit that and it's going to start rendering um, be patient with it depending on what type of computer you have it will it will vary in how long it takes so um, I'll let this render and then uh, when I'm editing this video I will throw this animation in the end so you can see what it turns out like thanks for watching guys it's just 16 minute tutorial well at least I can upload over 15 minute vids now so this has been Ezra from NextGen Studio X. Thank you for watching, and uh, I'm out. Thanks, guys.